What's up everyone? We're uh, in the process of installing the Perrin rear shifter bushing. So we've started by putting the car up on jack stands. Hopefully you can see that. That's in the front. I always leave the jack underneath. And we also did the exact same thing back there. Got a jack stand underneath the car and we have the actual jack itself. Uh, then we're also following Perrin's instructions. So we're in the process of loosening that center support bearing on the drive shaft and then up here hopefully you guys can see that there is one of the bolts and then there is the other bolt if i can get my light to cooperate um to access that rear shifter bushing so this isn't really going to be an install video i'm just kind of taking you guys along for the ride of the journey of my install and then i'll ultimately take this thing out for a drive and tell you if it was even worth all the effort okay we successfully took the uh factory rear shifter bushing off the gr86 and i've got it up here on the workbench now and we're going to compare it to the perrin one uh, that i'm going to be installing so i'll flip the camera around and show you guys what i'm talking about okay so in front of me i have the rear shifter bushing made by perrin as you can see uh, engraved into the rubber and then here to the left is the factory one i just pulled out of the gr86 um I'm honestly a little surprised. This has actually got a little bit of metal to it in terms of the actual uh, bracketry, but then it has very minimal, pretty flimsy rubber that's inside of it. I mean, it mimics a traditional engine mount, trans mount, etc., in the way that it's set up. The Perrin one is basically a solid block of rubber. I don't know if this is maybe Delrin, but it uh, feels like a solid chunk of rubber and so it's essentially going to replace the factory one and i think it sits something like that so we'll see if it makes any kind of difference all right if you're trying to install the perrin rear shifter bushing on your gr86 or brz which you've already installed a aftermarket exhaust, or at least in my case, the Borla. Um, I could not, for the life of me, get that bushing in there without dropping the exhaust. I don't know if the factory exhaust sits a little bit lower or further away from the drive shaft, uh, because in the parent instructions, it just says undo the center support shaft bearing and let it lay on the exhaust and I was not able to do that at all. Um, so I lowered the exhaust uh, or the cat back exhaust uh, and it gave it just enough room for the drive shaft to relax to slide the bushing. If I can zoom in here, hopefully you guys can see that. Let's get a different angle. So it allowed me to get the bushing right on in there. Um, so definitely recommend uh, doing that. If you've got an aftermarket exhaust, it gave me so much room I was able to get in there. I did damage the little felt thing here in the beginning, trying to finagle it up there without doing that. And I was unsuccessful. Uh, not, not that it's necessary, but it definitely helps. Uh, if you've got a ratchet with you know at least 144 teeth like in me like in my case here i have a husky with 144 teeth i don't have a ton of room to work with um, but it made quick work of getting the bolt tightened so definitely another thing i would recommend if you can just to make the job that much easier okay as mentioned we were installing the perrin rear shifter bushing so we just got that done as mentioned if you have an aftermarket exhaust like I do. I have the Borla S-Type. Uh, the instructions do not tell you to remove the catback exhaust. I will tell you, at least in my experience, the only way that bushing's coming out is to remove it, but wasn't that hard to do. Honestly, working on a car that is new and nothing seized or rusty is kind of nice. But with that being said, hopefully you can see that Perrin bushing up there. Got it all buttoned up. Got the exhaust back on, as you can see. Borla. So, got jack stands and a jack in the front and the rear for safety. So, that's uh, 
that's it for the install part of this i guess what i'll do is i'll uh i'll take it for a drive and i'll tell you if it's even worth the effort i can tell you that the rubber bushing is much much tighter in terms of clearances in comparison to the factory one that came out of it so i'm optimistic we will uh we'll see some meaningful change Okay, so we just installed the Perrin rear uh, shifter bushing. Uh, I think it's either rubber or Delrin, I can't remember, but uh, got it installed. We took the car out for a drive. I didn't film the drive. Honestly, I just wanted to drive it uh, without any distractions and honestly listen for, listen for noises or anything else to make sure that I didn't uh, forget anything while I was uh, reinstalling all of it back together. I will say, I don't know if it's the placebo effect or if it's real, uh, but it definitely seems like the shifter is far more, um, I don't want to say accurate, uh, but if you've ever driven uh, a really good transmission, you know how good it feels for the gears just to naturally go in. Um, the one, first to second and second to third on my car have always been kind of eh. Uh, first to second's not too bad but definitely second to third. From third all the way through six has always been smooth, even with the factory bushing. Uh, I will say now, it does seem that first to second is just as smooth. Now it's really just second to third on occasion. Uh, and I really think that has more to do with just getting used to kind of the rev hang that this car has um, and really learning the clutch. Because when I first got it, I, it was super annoying. And after having the car for a year now, I've, I've learned to get used to it um, and really drive with it. Uh, one thing I will show you, though, flip the camera around to show you this, but I got the clutch in, and it is very notchy in terms of how the engagement is, and it definitely feels like there's a lot more pressure on the shifter, which makes sense because when I was installing it, you know, it's just beneath here in the transmission tunnel, it, it has significantly more pressure against the back of the shifter housing than the factory uh, bushing did. So it's not surprising that this is a bit uh, stiffened up because of that. It just adds rigidity. Uh, so I think overall for the price I paid for the, the bushing itself, I would say it's worth to do. Uh, it certainly didn't hurt. Um, so with that being said, you know, anything that can improve the driving experience, I think is worth it. I think at some point I'm going to probably replace this shifter, uh, with a, uh, short throw shifter, um, at least one, uh, that's probably a little bit more, um, stiff, uh, in terms of like the bushing that's actually down in here to the linkage. Um, cause I think that would probably complete the, uh, the necessary, uh, improvements to make the shifting that much better, but Overall, if you're on the fence about doing this, honestly say wait for a sale, pick up the shifter uh, bushing on sale and just do it because um, for like 30 bucks, I would say it's worth it.